Try for good. Good morning. Welcome to back to the Ronin shop, and we're here today to talk about uh, tying down artificial hydroxyls or AHDs. And this morning we set up a, an SMC vector monopod on the top of our, our overhung deck. Now, when you're tying down artificial high directionals, you need to really pre-plan these things and, and visualize where the forces are going to be. Because our eventual goal, when we have tension, if we just throw in one rope into the system here to show you, we would typically we'd have, oh, we, we might have two ropes off the vector, we might have one over the ground, there's different ways to rig these things. But you can see that the whole purpose of an artificial high direction is to elevate the rope above the edge. In this case, we're not over the edge, but instead of a 90 degree edge, we have, um, I don't know, I can't see what that angle is from here, but less than 90. So we have less friction when we're bringing a load up and over. Uh, it's going to be a lot easier than if the rope was flat on the ground. But the goal with setting up the high directional is that the resultant, and as we tension this rope, we put tension on this rope, we can see the resultant, we trace the result from the carabiner through the axle of the pulley, is pretty close in line with the leg of the vector. Ideal would be, be exact, uh, that's not always possible or sometimes difficult to do. Uh, it's really neat when you, you, you have that you're running a system, you look at your pulley that's perfectly in line with your monopod. We're not quite there today, but this is a pretty small angle. You want the smallest angle possible between your, your applied force or your resultant and the leg of your, your AHD. Now to get it there, it's one thing to pick a spot where you want this change of direction uh, pulley to be and set your HD up to hold it there, but you really need to pre-plan how you're going to tie this down to prevent this from moving. And that's really important because as we load an artificial high direction, it's going to compress and any tensile forces like this rope running that way or running this way if we're hauling will tend to pull the HD this way or that way. Just and you need to be mindful anytime you apply a load to the HD, it's going to want to go in that direction. So our tie backs are preventing that. You can tie an HD, a monopod back with either four tie backs or three. Today we've gone with three at approximately 120 degrees angle uh, in between each leg. I personally prefer three tie backs generally. It's less equipment, it's a little simpler, and anytime I tighten one tie back, it's automatically tightened the other two. Because of your situation uh, that you're in, the, the location of anchors you have available, you may need to go four because you might not be able to get the 120 degree separation. Uh, also with four, it just gives you, it's, as you change the tension of the tie backs, it affects the, the location of the, uh, the, the orientation of the HD a little bit differently. Both are acceptable techniques. Now, I've tied this back three using three different tools today. On this front tie over here, we typically call anything forward to change the direction of front tie. This is just a, a Petzl Grion, three meter Grion, hand tension on it. Our, our back tie, and the back tie is one of the, the more important ones because we always want to prepare these things back from the edge. This is set up in the fault in the hazard zone within two meters of the edge. So this is always going to be attached to a rope before it comes here. Typically we use the back tie for that purpose so that we don't lose this over the cliff. In this case I'm using a uh, rock exotic Aztec 4 to 1. 4 to 1 setups are great, they're quick, they're simple. I've got lots of plumes here if I won't need to apply a lot of tension. If I apply tension to this 4 to 1, I'm going to pull this AHD back. And I might want to do that after I've done the front ties to more closely align the, the resultant force through the pulley and the leg of the, the monopod. And the four one can get extra oomph to do that. Oh, we've lost an Easter egg, one on the right. <clears throat> Prizes for whoever can can't find all the Easter eggs. Count them. So the downside to using the four to one and agree on though is these are equipment intensive. Uh, they're always expensive pieces of equipment, they're heavier pieces of equipment, and they're both actually overkill because we don't need a lot of force. I mean, if we want an extra force, I can turn this green into a three to one. Typically, with tie backs, front ties, back ties, we don't need more force than we can put in by hand. So what I've done is I've taught, done the rest of the ties with this length of green seven millimeter cord, hard tied into this carabiner, 
There's a non-working three to one here. We gave that some hand tension, got this in the position we wanted, tied it off with a bow hitch. I then used the remainder of that cord, brought it back to the foot of the tripod, hand tension, hard tie, looped it around, tied it in here, out to this anchor, hand tension, tie it off, brought it back, tied it off, and hand tension to the back anchor. So now my foot can't go in any direction either, because in this case, as I'm pulling on these forward ties, this foot wants to skate out backwards, but now it can't because it, the foot is tied forward as well. So what we're really trying to do is anticipate any potential movement in the HD and prevent it with our ties. That means positioning the head, positioning the foot, and securing. We're on a wooden deck here, um, and we've taken, especially when we're using flat feet, we've screwed the feet right down to the deck. If I'm in the bush, I will put the, the foot of my monopod or uh, with, I mean, maybe a bipod or tripod, I'll find a divot in the rock that prevents it from moving. We'll drive rebar or stakes into the ground and lash it to it. Industrially, we'll put that foot up against something that we can lash it to it to prevent it from moving. Lots of different options. Uh, I'm just trying to demonstrate a few different ones, but enough um, small diameter cord. You can do all the tiebacks. Again, we don't need the oomph of a four to one, we can do it all with hand tension. And again, the whole goal of this is to get our applied force or resultant force angle as close to the leg of the tripod as possible. Now in this case, because we're a little bit off, I might want to see if I can just put a little extra tension on the four to one side and see if I can, if I bring this more vertical, I might be a little closer. And closing that angle down, and anytime you change one, you double check the others uh, to make sure that they haven't entered in the loose. And again, why I like the, I prefer the three tie downs is typically if I tighten one, it's automatically tightened the other two. Sometimes with the four tie downs, as you tighten one, one of the others may loosen off. I had this tied off, and that was just to get rid of this excess rope. Obviously, this is held by a, a prussic with a knot in the end of the cord, but this is a lot of rope. Um, that forms a trip hazard where I'm working, so I just want to get rid of it. That's all I'm doing here. Uh, it's just getting it out of the way. Angle from the top down. To tell you more about that. So guy angles are important in the angle between the guy and the monopod. A minimum of 30 degrees here. This cannot be less than 30 degrees. Ideally, it's going to be more than 40 degrees. Guy angles that are too steep, they lose efficacy and it's easier for the, the monopod to get out of compression, uh, and then the guy doesn't work in the monopod, and you're gonna lose your, your high directional. So a minimum of 30 degrees, they must be more than the applied force angle, in other words, the difference in the result of the pulley and the leg of your monopod. In this case, it's pretty small. So just a couple of guidelines, at least greater than that, must be greater than 30, ideally greater than 45, and we've achieved that with all of our guys here. So be very cautious as your guys get steeper because of the terrain you're operating in, maybe that's your anchoring options, and really carefully evaluate that. If you don't have at least 30 degrees, you will not have a stable monopod. Can you also go and show how we tied off that front one with the pull pitch, how we use the pull pitch in there as like a two to one to pull on, and then oh. cinch it down? Understanding you're going to loosen it. So Mark has decided not to be in duty this morning, but it doesn't stop him from wanting to say how things should go. <laughs> so we've got a hard tie at the top end, run this rope down to the carabiner, through the carabiner, back up in this carabiner, and down again, creating a non-working three to one. We then, Mark just uh, applied a clove hitch here, and it was able to hand tighten and pull the tension through the clove hitch. There's a lot of tools we could do here. I could just go three to one, hand tighten, tie up with a half hitch overhand. I could put a munter hitch in. Uh, I could throw a prussic on here if I wanted to. There's just so many different options. Again, we're not putting a tremendous amount of pressure. The Grion and the, and the four to one, they're, they're great fast tools for this, but they're overkill. I just need hand tight tension and a method to, to secure it. And typically a half hitch followed by an overhand secures uh, pretty much everything. Uh, the clove hitch here is just kind of a it's a, it's a nicer way to do it, it's sort of an, an extra step, um, and it works really well. We've also, don't forget your edge protection. Remember, rope must not touch anything other than pulleys, carabiners, and edge probe. 
that's the most fragile component of the system once you tie it down. This thing is solid, it's not uh, going anywhere. Now, in this case, because we, we use some bolt hangers here, we put it on the top of our deck so we can cleanly demonstrate everything. Our AHD, whoa, there goes another one. Our AHD is well back from the edge. And again, we're not over the edge, but we've broken the edge, which means less resistance for hauling, easier to get a load, um, transition the edge. If we want to actually get this closer to or even over the edge, it's entirely possible, but it does mean your front ties need to be over the edge. So in other words, if you're putting an AHD very close to or over the edge, you have to have resters over the edge and anchors over the edge to attach those front ties down in front. And then that, of course, the closer to, or, or even once you get this change your direction fully over the edge, your AHD becomes really powerful. Now you have a free hanging rope that's not contact with the edge. No friction on the rays, much easier edge transition. You just need the capability to actually anchor over the edge. Thank you very much, Mark. What's our uh, what's next week? What are we next doing? Next week we're doing bipods on the other platform so that we can put a right uh, high line between them. So our, our next live stream, we're going to do another artificial high directional, probably a, a bipod or a sideways A frame, uh, and we're going to kind of continue building on these components uh, and, and create a, a full blown system out of them. Thank you all for joining us, and again, any questions, comments, we'd love to hear them, and we'll answer the ones that we can. Happy Easter. Happy Easter. Thank you for viewing.